Back here on this Saturday morning, Sports Medicine Weekly, our producer Shane Reardon and our coordinating producer, Teresa Ann Seeger. I'm Steve Cashel, Chicago Bulls radio host with Dr. Nick Verma this week, subbing for Dr. Brian Cole. We appreciate Dr. Nick Verma's time. He is the head team physician for the Chicago White Sox, orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush concussions. We could do it every show, Dr. Nick. I mean, it just, it's such a scary thing. Uh, and more prevalent now in sports, no matter what sport you play. You don't have to play a sport to have a concussion. We're learning that, obviously. We've known that forever. But uh, what's the Major League Baseball policy, Dr. Verma? And uh, is there White Sox have a separate policy? You just follow the MLB policy on concussions? No, the, the policy is standardized uh, by the um, uh, commissioner and Major League Baseball's uh, um, experts in, in health uh, in the, the Major League office. But we really have taken a page out of the books from NHL and NFL. And fortunately in baseball, you know, being that it's not a quote-unquote collision sport, uh, we don't see concussions with the frequency we do in some of the other uh, collision sports that are out there. But we still do see them, and we see collisions in the field of play. We see uh, patients or players getting hit by balls, those kinds of things. So we see cl- concussions probably two to three times a year in the major league level uh, within our organization. It's really a multimodal approach. So number one, any patient that, or player that's suspected of a concussion has to be evaluated as such. Uh, number two is we do baseline cognitive testing on everybody. So a cognitive test is basically an objective way to quantify um, uh, neurologic function. So you ask them questions about memory and recall and uh, pattern recognition, et cetera. And you do that test when they're healthy, and then you can repeat that test after a concussion to get a sense of when are they back to normal for that individual athlete. And then probably the biggest thing is they've created a seven-day DL, which allows us to place patients into a concussion protocol, but get them back relatively quickly if they clear um, concussion testing. So there is a baseline then for all of your players. Every player gets one at the beginning of the season. Wow, interesting. Well, let's bring on uh, Kimmy Smith right now from Athletico. She is a facility manager, Illinois uh, and concussion coordinator at Athletico Physical Therapy, athletico.com. Athletico does a wonderful job. And, uh, boy, Kimmy, thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. My first question is, at what point is seeking physical therapy treatment for concussion appropriate for a patient? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I would say the biggest indicator generally is when a patient is not really returning to their pre-injury baseline like Dr. Verma was talking about. Uh, kind of within that spec- expected time frame. So there might be a suspicion that, you know, patient symptoms are coming from different systems. Um, so that's kind of when a PT will jump in and do our thorough evaluation on maybe what sy- system is affecting the patient's recovery. Kim, you know, at the um, professional level, obviously, we have so many resources available in managing our players and patients, um, neurologists and testing and MRI and CTs and whatever whatever we need, basically, is available at our fingertips not so much at the uh, high school level necessarily. And uh, obviously there are some now um, uh, Illinois regulations that require high school athletes to be cleared prior to returning to play after any type of a concussion episode. Talk to us about what resources Athletico has uh, available to help manage um, high school athletes with concussions. Yeah, absolutely. So on a high school level, I mean, they're lucky enough to have the athletic trainers in their, you know, in their high schools to kind of do those acute sideline tests um, to determine, you know, do they just need to sit out, rest, recover, um, you know, graded exposure to activity and learning, or are some yellow flags jumping out or these persistent symptoms lingering, or maybe physical therapy would then be appropriate. So then we can do these, you know, thorough evaluations and determine is there cervical spine involved? Is there a vestibular deficit that's going on and, you know, balance abnormalities and other things that could be lingering and and prolonging these symptoms in the recovery. Um, So I would say that then we at Athletico can run them through these uh, rehab protocols in order to get them back into functioning at, you know, 100% um, learning uh, activity, b- basically what they were doing prior to the injury. Kimmy Smith is our guest from Athletico. I'm Steve Cashel with Dr. Brian Coles. 
replacement for this week, Dr. Nick Verma. I almost caught myself there. <laughs> uh, I want to go back, uh, Dr. Nick, to what you said and what bring Kimmy in as well on this um, about the baseline test. How important is that? Again, I always bring up my two boys, 14 and 11, you know, playing hockey, baseball, basketball, football. And uh, one of my little guys fell off a bike, has never had a concussion in sports, uh, the 11 year old. But uh, always wondering about, you know, we never gave him a baseline test, but you do it for the Chicago White Sox. Um, and I'll ask Dr. Nick first, and then Kimmy, how important in Athletico do you guys do this? Uh, you know, should we start thinking about baseline tests for our, our younger people out there participating in uh, these various sports? So it's, I think it's becoming uh, uh, fairly common, Steve. I know uh, probably it's done universally at the professional organizational level. So for the NHL, NFL, uh, MLB, probably Major League Soccer, I would assume as well. And uh, it's certainly becoming much more common in collision sports at the NCAA level. Um, and I would not be surprised to see that it trickles down to, um, to the high school level. And Kim, maybe you can talk about that in terms of the trainers that Atletico has in some of the schools. The problem is Absolutely. that uh, the problem is that many symptoms of concussion can be very subtle, right? And so it's hard to make a determination about when a concussion has happened. Number one, and number two, about when a player is ready to go back, right? It's not like we can do an MRI and tell definitively, like we can with an ACL tear, sure. that a concussion has occurred. So these are just objective ways for us to get a sense about if a concussion has occurred and when has a has a player returned to their normal status. Kim, you want to add to that? Yeah, sure. So the athletic trainers, a lot of the high schools will offer these baseline tests in the school for some of their athletes. Um, We at Athletico also offer baseline testing at some of our centers. Um, And I I think these are essential in just kind of treating the patient as a whole. Um, Like Dr. Verma mentioned, you know, there's, there's a lot of objective things that we use to evaluate and determine did this athlete really sustain a concussion. And I think the the baseline test is just another tool in the game. Um, Not the end-all be-all, but definitely a a supplemental tool um, to help assist in the recovery. You know, and and Steve, I think it's particularly important for our younger athletes because we know that the impact of concussion on the younger athletes with the developing brain brain can be more severe. And they're also more at risk for what we call a second impact uh, um, syndrome, which means that they've had a concussion, they've had an incomplete recovery, and then they get a second uh, impact that creates a secondary concussion that can actually be in some uh, worst-case scenario life-threatening. And so I think for the younger players, um, it's it's essential that we have them treated appropriately, evaluated appropriately, and, and cleared by a healthcare professional prior to returning to a sport. And Kimmy, I want to ask you, I know the most common symptom after facing a concussion, headaches and dizziness, uh, how does physical therapy address those? Yeah, sure. So basically the subjective complaints, what the patient is telling us is first and foremost, just so important in helping us determine kind of, you know, which system may be involved causing these symptoms of, of dizziness and headaches. It could be, like I had mentioned, their neck vestibular system, um, just intolerance to exertion and moving and get their their heart rate up. Um, So physical therapists, you know, specifically vestibular therapists will do a thorough evaluation um, basically to determine where the deficits lie. Is it their neck? Is it their eyes? Is it their uh, vestibular system of their inner ear and, and balance system? And kind of pinpointing where these deficits lie in order to then treat the patient as a whole and and get them um, functioning to their normal level. So, Kim, as you know, one of the last stages of concussion recovery is this is so-called the stress test, right? We want to put them through uh, vigorous physical activity and, and see how they respond. And many times patients who seemingly have recovered will have some recurrence of symptoms when they uh, exert themselves. Can you talk about... Absolutely, with that autonomic nervous system. (laughs) Absolutely. Can you talk about the protocols that you guys use to advance patients and how you know when they're ready to go back? Yeah, absolutely. So we use a generally a buffalo treadmill test to determine kind of where they're at. Um, you know, that's just a, it shows the physiological dysfunction in concussion, determines the exertional capacity, and we kind of use a symptom threshold then training to treat it. So once they've kind of crossed all other uh, T's and dotted their I's, we generally push them through this the symptom threshold on how much they can tolerate exertionally, be it walking, then, you know, running, and then getting them into more agility-based and sports-specific um, activities. We like to call this return to participation protocol that we're using in order to just make sure they're 
achieving all of these markers in order to ensure safety with return to their sport. So we're running them through specific agility training and and sports specific activities and, um, you know, bringing their hockey sticks in, bringing their soccer balls in and running them through, um, you know, drills and skills that they might see on, on a practice on a practice field in order to then clear them to then try a non-contact practice, a full contact practice before they're ever cleared to participate in a full game. Well said. Kimmy, we're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Kimmy Smith from Athletico, a facility manager and concussion coordinator for Athletico Physical Therapy. Athletico.com is their website. Still ahead Inside the clubhouse here on The Score with Bruce Levine. That's our next show after we're done. But we've got more, one more segment. We're going to talk about how Dr. Nick Verma and the Chicago White Sox medical staff plan the players' off-season workouts and how much time do they take off after the Major League season comes to a close and also some uh, tips out there for the uh, Little League players and those maybe in high school. How much throwing should they do? A lot ahead. So we'll talk about that as our coverage of sports medicine continues. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly only on 670 The Score.